Good morning. My name is Damien, the tall, friendly atheist dad from the Tall, Friendly Atheist Dad Podcast. Wherever you are, whatever time of day it is, I hope you're well. If you're listening, if you're listening to this on the live stream, feel free to participate in the chat. If you also want to be part of the of the discussion, uh, message me, and I'll happily let you in. And if you're listening to this on YouTube or after, after it's been recorded, then, yeah, hey, I hope wherever you are, whatever you're doing, that this next uh, half hour, hour or so, however long however long I'm reading this for, uh, makes you feel better, yeah, picks you up, um, all that kind of stuff. So I have to thank, I have to thank my friend Jax for suggesting this book to me. Um, I gave her, I gave her a list of books I could read for this, uh, for this episode, and... <laughs> This is this is the one she picks, so um, I don't know if she hates me or likes me, but we'll we'll soon find out. So this book is by Pastor Creflo Dollar. Um, if you haven't heard of him, I would uh, yeah suggest that you uh, um, go look him up. Uh, he is a prosperity preacher. I think he runs the World Changes Church International uh, out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and one of the reasons I picked Creflo Dollar was because I used to be a fundamentalist charismatic who I wasn't, how can I say, and I, a lot of my beliefs lined up with the prosperity preaching uh, side of uh, Christianity, whether it be um, the, the Hillsong side, the Assemblies of God side, um, you know, I used to I used to read material from, you know, Creflo Dollar and uh, Kenny Copeland and Benny Hinn and Joel Osteen and Joyce Meyer and you know that kind of a uh, uh, new uh, I can say very novel very new very recent kind of uh, theology that's come out in the last you know 50 years or so and so uh, the opportunity to get this book uh, Creflo Dollar so the book is Creflo Dollar Why I Hate Religion 10 Reasons to Break Free from the Bondage of Religious Tradition um, and yeah, I can't wait to see what he has to say about um, <laughs> about, <laughs> about why Christianity is a relationship and not a religion is, is kind of the, the short answer of it. But yeah, again, if you are uh, listening uh, right now on the stream, feel free to uh, enter some comments. Uh, I'll, I will respond to comments as they come in. So, you know, don't, don't, don't be shy. This is, uh, I'm friendly, remember? It's, it's in the name. Tall, friendly atheist dad i'm just not i'm not a, i'm not a curmudgeon uh except uh when i haven't had my when i haven't had my coffee that's when a uh, curmudgeon mode gets turned on so anyway um i'll get into i'll get into the book uh so creflo dollar why i hate religion 10 reasons to break free from the bondage of religious tradition um on the topic, on the topic, topic of Creflo Dollar, uh, on the YouTube channel, the Tall Friendly Atheist Ad Podcast YouTube channel, uh, I do have a playlist uh, devoted to uh, Creflo Dollar's uh, Total Life Prosperity, and that reminds me, I better uh, pick up pick up that series again as well. Um, yeah, and I, I think Creflo Dollar is a, a theological lightweight. Um, I think he, uh, um, yeah, doesn't doesn't say too much worth listening to. Um, except well probably if you if you believe if you believe it then you believe it and um yeah but uh, now that i've stepped away from the faith um yeah it's just not a just not um yeah just not there anyway so so i'm going to start with the introduction so in three i should just double check uh, no late late messages have uh, come in and i might have guests as well uh, i might not that's uh but if you do, if you don't know what I do, and if you want to be a guest and just jump in and you know, meet a new friend, feel free to jump in. So with the click of the fingers, three, two, one, this is the introduction. I hate religion. That's right. I'm a preacher and I said it myself. Why? Because re religion portrays the image of what it defines as godliness, but has no power to back it up. It thrives on the concept of attaining right standing with God through self-effort while downplaying what Jesus has done for us. Unfortunately, religion has caused many people to actually turn away from God and, and the promises contained in the Bible. A concentration on religion 
has been responsible for death, destruction, and strife among people of all ethnicities and backgrounds. It is why denominations cannot get along, and it is what provokes extremists to carry out suicide missions in the name of God. Religion is the counterfeit of having a real relationship with the Lord. Now, let me make another bold statement. God hates religion too. Jesus used every opportunity to blast the religious leaders of his day for carrying out vain traditions that meant nothing. Just read Matthew 23, where Jesus rebuked the Pharisees for saying one thing, but doing another, and for blindly following after rituals and law-based traditions, done only to make them look good. Religion is made up of man's ideas, interpretations, and prejudices based on selfish desires, attempts to control others, and a stubborn determination to be right. Where is God in that? Religion completely takes God out of the equation and replaces him with the God of self in the form of self-effort, self-righteousness, and self-gratification. True Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship with Christ. Now that I love. Oh boy, so two paragraphs in and already there is so much that he's... Uh, well, he's got a couple of things. I will say he's got a couple of things right. There's no, yeah, no no problem there. He's got, you know, sort of a couple of, uh, um, yeah, as I say, yeah, so he's, uh, um, in that, you know, um, you know, religious people have, you know, uh, fought in inter interdenominational battles, uh, suicide missions, uh, extremists, uh, death, destruction, and strife. But, sorry. How do we differentiate between a religion and a relationship? Um, and this whole this whole thing about you know it's not a religion, it's a relationship. Well, I don't know how many relationships uh, threaten to torture you with uh, um, eternal punishment for not being in the relationship. I don't know how many relationships uh, implore you to call other people fools. I don't know how many relationships, you know, um, abrogate, you know, try to abrogate your human rights. I don't know how many relationships get tax benefits simply for being a relationship. You know, it's it's uh, it's both weird and annoying. And uh, comment f and comment from. There's only two genders. Religion isn't bad. To a point, I agree. Um, there are some aspects of religion that do have benefits. Um, and my, my whole take on religion is that religion was a... Um, religion thrived in times and places where there weren't police forces and where there weren't uh, justice systems uh, in place. So you needed religion as a mechanism in order to enforce cultural and moral standards to keep society functioning. Um, having said that, um, I think now that we have police forces and we have standards and we have you know worldwide travel and we have you know communication and we have research, religion isn't necessary. So the only question is now why would you be religious when you can you when you can be just uh, just as moral. A person without religion and thank you for your follow-up comment which says religion can have its downsides yes uh, and this is the question like, what is the difference between a religion and a relationship and that might be something uh, to get into and uh, yeah, thank you for that thank you for that comment as well um, and look I, I will say that uh, people have done very good things in the name of religion uh, and because they are motivated by their religion the question I have is, did they need that religion to um, to do those good things? And I think in the end, they didn't. Um, yeah, so my whole point is that like religion necessarily isn't bad. Fundamentalist religion is bad. So, yeah. Then we get to, uh, where where was it? Um, 
So it's interesting that, you know, um, so we're, we're this, in this line here where it says, just read Matthew 23, where Jesus rebuked the Pharisees for saying one thing for, for, and for doing another. Um, then he goes, uh, religion, relig, religion is made up of man's ideas, interpretations, and prejudices based on selfish desires, attempts to control others, and a stubborn determination to be right. Um, <laughs> geez, that, he's right. That is what <laughs> That is what religion is. But the problem is he can't say that Christianity isn't that, um, especially when you get to the more fundamentalist, uh, fundamentalist extremes, such as the uh, independent fundamentalist Baptists, uh, the Mormons, um, you know, all these, uh, you know, I'm sure if, you, if you're familiar with the, the Bible Belt of America, you know, where things can be uh, fairly uh, socially restrictive as well. So it's, um, yeah, it's... And the problem, and then the next problem is that okay, so I I don't believe there's a god, um, and so how then do you deter how how then did you determine that all of the other religions, you know, they're following man-made ideas and concepts and uh, precepts, whereas the Bible is definitely the word of God, you know, and don't you don't you dare argue the point, you know, it's um, uh, it's one of it's one of those things. It's like it's a bit of a circular bit of a circular argument, you know. Um, my uh, my my scriptures are the word, word are the words of God. How do you know that? Because the other ones aren't. How do you know the other ones aren't? Because because <laughs> they're not the words of my God. How do you know that? Because the Bible I the Bible I have is the word of my God. Yeah, it's uh, anyway. And also, I did have a um. If you do go to the podcast anchor.fm forward slash tfa dad. Um, I do have a, a short episode where I briefly uh, discuss the the concept that you know, or the, the mantra that Christianity isn't a religion, it's a relationship. And I, I tear that one apart in about four minutes. Anyway, so I'll get back to the book, but there's only two genders. Thank you for your comments. I appreciate them. Three, two, one. In this book, we will explore what religious tradition teaches about God versus what a relationship with God is all about. I will give you my top 10 reasons why I hate religion and show you how religion actually hinders your relationship with God. I may step on your traditions. I may contradict what you have been told all your life. I might even make you angry. But just stick with me until the end. After I present the difference between religion and a real relationship with God, I believe you will see things in a different light. You might even find you hate religion too. Now, more than ever before, people need to hear the truth about the gospel of Jesus Christ. I would agree. People do, people do need to hear the truth about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is a message of hope, not condemnation. Liberty, not religious bondage. Grace, not self-effort. Most of the things we have grown up hearing about God are completely incorrect. We have come to relate to God as an angry taskmaster who is waiting for us to mess up so that he can strike us down with a lightning bolt. We have gotten so far away from what Christianity is really about and have presented a picture of God that actually turns people away from wanting to know him. It is time for us to get back to the simplicity of the gospel and share the truth about the love and grace of God with the world. Now, I'll finish. There's only one more paragraph, and once I finish the paragraph, I'll get onto comments. When I reflect on my own life, uh, sorry, there's a, little, there's a little side here. Actually, no, very, really read that, sorry. Uh, my own life, my journey as a Christian, and my understanding of the Word of God, I thank God for continuing to enlighten my understanding on this topic. There are religious ideas that I grew up with that I've come to find out are simply flat out wrong. My hope is that you have carefully looked at the religious misconceptions that you have heard and internalized, and discover the truth about what it means to have a real relationship with Jesus Christ. It is through relationship, not religion, that we are empowered to do the works that Jesus did and more. Join me on this journey as I share with you why I hate religion. Okay, so that, and then he ends with the uh, three Bible verses. Yeah, whatever, whatever. And then goes on to section one. So just on the, those last couple of paragraphs. Um, yeah, so where he, uh, again, like there's, no, okay, we'll have to go through the book and see see how he differentiates. But um, 
probably I say he's got this line here we've come to relate to God as an angry taskmaster who is waiting for us to mess up so he can strike us down with a lightning bolt um, the problem though is is that that is what the Bible uh, the Bible presents uh, presents God as you know there are numerous times um, so if we go through the Old Testament uh, there are numerous places in the Old Testament where God releases a plague uh, for people who said the wrong thing like if you look at the the story of the ten spies you know the, the ten spies um, or the twelve spies and ten of those spies gave the bad report but only two gave the good report and then God uh, releases a plague because you know uh, also God curses the whole of Israel to stay in the desert for 40 years because of ten people you know um in Numbers, I think Numbers 11, um, so I have to check that verse, but yeah, Numbers 11, where like, oh, there's also another part where like God opens up the ground to swallow up the families of the of the uh, people who led, uh, who tried to make an alternate priesthood. You know, so you can't, if you take the Bible literally and as the word of God, um, you know, you, you can't, uh, you can't say that God doesn't arbitrarily punish. Uh, and then when we get to um, when we get to uh, the New Testament, we see with the story of Ananias and Sapphira that um, God uh, what was going to say um, God kills Ananias and Sapphira or the, the Holy Spirit, but you know the Holy Spirit is also God. The Holy Spirit kills Ananias and Sapphira because they gave the wrong amount of money to the church. That's like, well, yeah, yeah. God, God is upset because some people didn't get, didn't give enough money to the church. <laughs> that what, what, a, what a surprise! And then we see also also in Acts where um, God strikes down Herod because he refused to give God glory. I mean, it's like if you're trying to say that. God isn't a up there with the lightning bolt. Well, I agree, he's probably not up there, up there with the lightning bolt, but you know he is up there looking for looking for sin. You know, um, and we also see with uh, ne uh, King Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel. You know, where Nebuchadnezzar didn't give God glory, so God seemingly struck Nebuchadnezzar with a mental illness that made him go out and eat eat uh, grass like animals. So yeah, you can't really say that you know God is God is kind and loving and patient, and then you go through example after example after example after example after example of where God does arbitrarily kill people, you know, or punish people, or you know, um, he curses families for the actions of one man. You know, so it's um, yeah, and then like, and like I'm sure you know if you come to like an old timey preacher. You know, um, all those old timey preachers, and I'm, I suppose I'm thinking of the Independent Fundamentalist Baptist here. You know, he will say that you know you 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 are liable to go to hell for reading the wrong version of the Bible. Um, you know, or you know, alcohol drinking alcohol will cause you to go to hell, or you know, um, or there's so many people that God hates. You know, God hates Jews, God hates Muslims, God hates um, promise keepers, God hates you know. Uh, welfare recipients. Uh, there, there's actually a picture I've got in my mind of a, like a picture from an I, uh, an IFB church where it lists like two dozen things that God God hates. You know, it's a God hates atheists. God hates you know. Um, so the problem is that there's so much. Like I agree, there's also so much backing for a good and happy God, but there's also so much for a for a um, for a bad and cranky God. That yeah, you can't really. Um, yeah, so it seems so. It seems that um, a, a relationship with Christ is one in which you're happy and you know thriving, but it's the religion that causes you know causes all this death and strife and all that kind of stuff. But then I'm sure those people who are causing the death and the strife and you know um, making women feel subjugated and saying you know women can't be pastors or they can't even speak in church and you know you, women aren't allowed to wear jeans or pantsuits or you know no alcohol for us and you know don't listen to rock music and don't hang around with the trendies high church split um yeah, all, all this kind of stuff you know they'll say well you know 
I'm sure they're going to say, hey, we're in a relationship with Christ, you know, and being in a relationship with Christ requires you to do what he says. Because the thing says in the, in the gospel, you know, you will show your love for me by doing what I command you. So it's like, <laughs> by doing what I command you, <laughs> that is that is religion 101. You know, <laughs> he, will, he will show your love for me by doing what I command you. It's like, well, you know, you can't, you can't say it's a relationship. Then follow a guy who says, you know, if you love me, follow my commands. It's like, oh boy. Anyway, oh boy, that feels 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 better already. Um, but I do agree that yeah, some parts of a religion are just flat out wrong. And if you listen to the last two episodes of my podcast where I discuss the uh, uh, the KJV, uh, where I respond to a KJV debate, um, you see, there's a few points that I pick up on there so anyway i'll get to how long are we in for now 20 okay 20 minutes so we'll go for another yeah a bit longer so now uh chapter one is called reason 10 religion teaches that money is the root of all evil okay so let me just get my sorry let's get my screen up because i missed okay so sorry if you're listening on the listening on the stream. Okay, so three, two, one. Visit any barber shop or beauty parlor on a Saturday morning, and you will see people from all walks of life discussing any number of topics. You'll hear the latest gossip, as well as everything from politics and sports to finances and religion. Religion and money always seem to be the hot topics. Saved or unsaved, almost everyone has heard the saying, money is the root of all evil. This phrase has shaped the mindsets of millions and has kept them in financial bondage. The notion that money is the root of all evil comes from 1 Timothy 6.10, which says, For the love of money is the root of all evil. This is one of the most misquoted verses in the Bible. I've heard preacher after preacher use this scripture as their basis to support the teaching that Christians should be broke or that money shouldn't be talked about in church. This erroneous teaching has kept many people in financial bondage and has caused them to live under the burden of lack and debt. These false preachers teach their congregations that God uses poverty to humble them. They tell them to be content with what they have because money is evil and it will ruin them. I've even, I've even heard statements such as, it's godly to be poor, and it's not God's will for his people to prosper. These false doctrines have been passed down through the generations. It is no wonder that people are wary of ministers who preach the true gospel where prosperity is concerned. Most people think that prosperity is money. While that is not incorrect, it is incomplete. Biblical prosperity encompasses every area of your life. This includes your mind, will, and emotions, as well as your physical body. It also includes your marriage, family, business, and finances. All right, so just in those few paragraphs there, so I'm just going to move around. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so just just in those just in those few paragraphs there, um, yeah, it's interesting that I don't want to play ad hominem. I really do try to avoid uh, that, those kind of things. Um, it's just interesting, though, that listening, listening to a or reading reading the words of a prosperity preacher, you know, say that, um, you know, like coming against the the concept that the money is the root of all evil. Um, I think I think he does have a point, but the problem then is is that prosperity preachers go the all the other way. And go. What's wrong with money? You know, a little bit, a little bit more money is good. You know, I need money for my, my lifestyle. I need money for my, you know, for the church building. I need money to, you know, um, I have a lifestyle to upkeep. Oh, I need sixty-five million dollars for a jet. You know, all this, uh, all this stuff. And it's just, um, yeah, it's just interesting. Um, you know, me personally, as 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 an atheist, um, I, having money is good, but I think uh, the best the best idea on money is that um, it's good to earn it, 
uh, especially legally. Um, but don't uh, don't be a jerk about how you go about getting money, and yeah, you know don't don't tr- don't tr- tread on you know, on your fellow man to get that money. You know don't don't exploit people for for money. You know, like you know you can uh, you can be a shrewd businessman. Um, but yeah, don't, don't be manipulative or exploitative or, you know, or cynical. Yeah. That's kind of the only, um, yeah, my, my policy of money and, and spend it, wi- spend it wisely as well. So anyway, let's get back to the, uh, let's get back to the book. Third John 2, 2 says, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Like any father, God wants you to have well-being in every area of your life, including your finances. Religion has trained you to think that it's okay to have success in other areas of your life, as long as you're broke. The sad thing is that many people have brought this lie. Just on that, just on that, um, I'm going to give a shout out to my friend, uh, Dr. Arup Chatterjee. Uh, if you find uh, find him on Twitter, he's um, yeah, he's a pretty pretty cool guy. Um, he wrote a book called Mother Teresa: The Untold Story, and he was actually one of the two devil's advocates at uh, Mother Teresa's beatification. And he shreds the myth of Mother Teresa apart. In short, it was a it's right for thee, but not for me kind of a kind of ad, especially when it came to money. Um, you know, like Mother Teresa had a lake house in Italy. You know, when when Mother Teresa needed care, you know, she went to like to the best hospitals in Europe to get you know um, to get her treatment. Um, whereas you know the the conditions that um, the people under under the care of the missionaries of charity were under were you know anything but you know anything but standard. Uh, but yeah, so if you look up the book. Uh, Mother Teresa, The Untold Story by Dr. Arup Chatterjee. Um, yeah, it's a read. Uh, for me, I find it hard to read just because it shatters so many myths. Um, yeah, I was brought up on the Mother Teresa is a saint. Well, she's a saint. It's just I don't think she deserves <laughs> to be called a saint. But anyway, anyway, let's get back to the book. So in three, two, one. Many people are okay with hearing sermons on salvation or on renewing their minds, but they don't want the minister to preach about money. What confounds me is that the problem most people have is money, or the lack of it. The majority of church folks are broke, busted, disgusted, and up to their eyeballs in debt. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me, the anointed one, the Messiah, to preach the good news, the gospel, to the poor. Luke four eighteen A and P. What is the good news to the poor? Is that they don't have to be poor anymore, and the only way to be delivered from poverty is through hearing the word of God on prosperity and then doing what it says. Jeez, I wish only if only Elon Musk and you know Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg. And, you know, Steve Wozniak and all that, you know, maybe that's how they got rich. They didn't, those guys didn't get rich from, you know, building products that, you know, and services that we need. You know, they, got, they prospered by reading the word of God. <laughs> oh, Crefler, you crack me up. He that is faithful in that which is least, sorry, he that is faithful in that which is least is also faithful in much. And he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much. Luke 6.10 Money is the least important way we can show our trust in Him. When we can demonstrate to ourselves that we can trust God enough to give monetarily, we'll know that we can trust Him for the really big things, such as peace, joy, abundance, prosperity, and all of the other promises He's made to us. We get so fearful of the shysters of the world hiding out in the pulpit and posing as honest ministers. Yeah, that's that's right. You, you preach it, brother. That when we get up to the point in church, when we hear it's time for the offering, we freeze up. We think, there's no way I'm, go- I'm giving anything to this guy, 
and let him line his pockets with my money. Did you catch that? My money! Child of God, everything is the Lord's, including money. He doesn't need yours, but he does need your trust. And when you give because you want to, instead of out of a sense of duty or obligation, it opens up the floodgates of blessing he wants to pour out on you. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Alright, so that ends that section, and um, yeah, I just find it oh, a little bit just incongruous, <laughs> you know, um, because, you know, you see these preachers with, you know, the private jets and the flashy suits and the and the mansions and the, you know, it's like, it's hard not to think, well, you know, not, not only just the mansions and the suits, but also, you know, the treatments and the you know, when they, when they go to an international preaching conference, you know, that they then stop over in Hawaii or the Bahamas and have like a, a family holiday, uh, all expenses paid by the ministry, um, stuff like that. Whereas the, the reality is that most churches, you know, run on the smell of an oily rag. You know, um, I, I've been in churches, I've been in churches where uh, the pastors have worked a full-time job and it was, I think it was, like, it was actually mandatory for the pastors to work a full-time job so that, you know, um, uh, yeah, um, yeah, for the pastors to have a full-time job to show that they're not borrowing from the church. And um, and then the Baptist church that, that I was I was in for a few years as well, um, uh, yeah, like, um, how can I say, like, you knew that, okay, yes, your money helped pay their salary, but that they weren't driving flashy, expensive cars, you know, there were people who live in the, you know, the working class suburbs, you know, like around the corner from me. You know, so you know that, you know, they're not, you know, funding, you know, they're adding, they're not adding an extra story to their house and all that. And, you know, you can actually go through the records and see what each person's being paid. Yeah. And they will provide those records. So it's just interesting that um, the smaller churches have a lot more financial propriety about them. Um, you know, and are more willing to submit themselves to the re to the you know regulations, whereas you know these mega churches uh, do seem to you know hide behind the you know like <laughs> yeah a bit more cynical uh, I suppose is what, uh, what I put it. But anyway, uh, let's get to the next section. The next section is is money evil? I want you to look at First Timothy six ten. And read it more closely this time. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Nowhere in this scripture does it say that money in and of itself is the root of all evil. Many have taught this scripture to mean something entirely different from what God said. The love of money, or having a wrong relationship with it, is the root of all evil. That one word, love, makes a huge difference. Actually, I'm just going to quickly pause there. I think it's actually... Oh, actually, okay. Sorry to do this on the live stream, but um, no, I'm not going to take... I'm definitely not going to take my clothes off. I'll, I'll promise promise you that. Um, but let me jump on Bible Gateway for a second. Um, okay, so I grew up with the New International Version, and I love it or hate it, it's the one I grew up with. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. So that there, like, so I think there's even even a difference between saying money is the root of all evil and the money is a root of all kinds of evil. Now, and then that's this is where the um, equivocation is like, well, you know, like when you say all kinds, you know, are you, do you mean it literally? Or do you mean like, it's sort of like... Um, Oh, electing President Trump unleashed all kinds of problems on America. You know, like like they say, all kinds as a as a synonym for um, you know for just a lot. And it's like yeah, and but you know the love like the love of money is not the root of all kinds of evil. You know, I would say that um, uh, sexual perversion is you know um, 
that's that's a, you know a, a just as bad and evil uh, as exploitation as well um you know sexual assault um yeah stuff like that that's also you know uh an evil slavery that's 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 a, now wage wage slavery uh that's also an evil um just trying to think what else yeah there's like you know um uh corruption uh power and control you know people exploiting for the sake of power and control that is also uh, an evil as well so I wouldn't so I have a problem with the idea that God is saying you know in first Timothy 6 10, no God did not write first Timothy God did not write the Bible you know uh, it's it is clearly you know the product of humans as a result of their culture at the time so yeah um so even the idea that you know this is what god said you know and this is this is the problem i have with biblical literalism is that you know it's you know every single word is the word of god you know including the parts where <laughs> including the part where jeremiah jeremiah says god you know you know you deceived me and i was deceived you know did god <laughs> did god write so God wrote that Jeremiah wrote that <laughs> God you deceive me oh oh boy so yeah this is a or like for example in in Solomon where you know the the guy expresses sexual desire for his sister um well, so, 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 but you know he wants to kiss his sister and it's like yeah, did God write that as well it's like <laughs> if God wrote song of song of songs uh God is a very bad uh, erotica writer I'll put it like that Anyway, let's let's get back to the book before I uh, burst out laughing even more. Let's say that I placed a one hundred dollar bill on a table. Is that money good or bad? What makes money good or bad depends on who holds it. If the money belongs to someone who tithes and sows money to advance the kingdom of God, then it is good. On the other hand, if you put the same money into the hands of a terrorist who uses the money to kill people, then it becomes bad. Is the money bad in and of itself? No. Whoever has the money determines the outcome of that money. Having a wrong relationship with money means that you trust money and material possessions more than you trust God. Using things to try to answer spiritual problems is an indication of having a wrong relationship with money. I'm sure you know someone who shops when he or she is depressed. Instead of turning to God as his or her source, and sources uh, with, with a capital S, this person tries to find comfort in things. God is the answer to any adversity, not possessions. God doesn't have a problem with your having money. He just doesn't want money to have you. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause here for a sec as well, because he said a, couple, a few, few interesting things. Um, he is right that, you know, um, money isn't evil in and of itself you know it's a uh, if you've got you know a jillion dollars sitting in the bank account and it's just sitting sitting in your bank account okay that's fine it's not 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 doing anything but um yeah it's usually when you is when you when you use it that is uh that's where the problem or depend depending what you're using it for but this analogy he's got here you know if the money belongs to someone who tithes and sows money to advance the kingdom of god then it's good and on the other hand, if the, if you put the same money to the hands of a terrorist who uses the money to kill people, then it becomes bad. Um, yeah, the problem though is is that um, in the in the eye of a lot of people, especially historically, um, they had no problems killing people to advance the kingdom of God. Um, I, I, I'm not I'm not going to say crusades. No, but um, like for example, the Thirty Years' War, you know, between the religious, uh, the Catholic and Protestant factions of Europe, you know, that you know obviously required money and manpower and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, uh, churches, uh, churches who use money to uh, silence uh, abuse victims into submission, into submission, and you know, and fear, you know, that, you know, that's a. Uh, yeah, so like you know, if you, if you give if you tithe to the, to your Catholic Church, you know, like you can go, ah, oh, I'm using it to help people who who advance the kingdom of God. But the problem is sometimes that those people who 
like what one what is advancing the kingdom of god and two you know um you can't argue against the proposition that advancing the advancing the kingdom kingdom of god means treading on people um yeah so that's uh you know like it hasn't been it, it's not true that christianity has been this warm fuzzy welcoming feel good force for you know good in society you know churches and religious people um have done horrible horrible things so anyway back to the book having a right relationship with money means we see it for what it is a tool god sends it our way in generous proportions when we seek him first and it's one of the ways he can bless us so much that it overflows into someone else's life one of the ways we can gauge if we have the right attitude about money is if we give to express our gratitude for what Jesus did for us and if it's done out of love. If it's not, no preacher in the world can make it right. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my, bo- my body to be burnt, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. 1 Corinthians 13.3 um yeah <laughs> this line here yeah one of the ways we can gauge we have the right attitude about it is if we give to express our gratitude for what jesus did yay <laughs> jesus died so you get my money oh that's as uh you know i can imagine the meme <laughs> you know, like you know, the shut up and take my money <laughs> you know like next to a picture of, of a of a uh, jesus crucified on the cross you know it's like that that's Oh boy, yeah, it's uh, well, if, if, like to to make that sentence correct, you should put you know express our gratitude for what we believe Jesus did for us. That that would be better. Anyway, uh, how much is left? Oh, so we've got like uh, okay, so yeah, so this chapter is split into into sections. So I'll go for maybe this one one last section, and then we'll uh we'll call it call it a call it, call it done. So three, two, one. Oh, that's a good click. That's better. Money is an amplifier. There are several lottery winners who have spent their entire fortune in a few short years. They've gone from poor to rich to poor again. Instead of using their money wisely, they've used it foolishly to satisfy their desires. They continue to live the same hellish lifestyle they lived before they became wealthy. They just had a lot more money at their disposal. Money didn't cause their misfortune. They did it to themselves. Proverbs 132 says, The prosperity of fools shall destroy them. If you put a million dollars in the hands of a fool, he will spend it frivolously. Because this person lacks knowledge and a relationship with God, money only amplifies his destructive lifestyle. Just think of the rock stars or movie stars who rose from obscurity only to die young from a drug overdose. You are the one who determines what kind of a relationship you will have with money, good or bad. If your heart and your spirit aren't right, no amount of money will make them right. Trying to chase down money and snatch up some of it for yourself is trusting in your own abilities, instead of having faith that God wants to be your financial source. It's a great example of living according to the law instead of by faith in his favour. For as, many are, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who continue, that continueth, not in all things which are written in the book of the, law, of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith, and the law is not, is not of faith, but the man that doeth shall live in them. Galatians three ten to twelve, Creflo, just use a, a freaking normal Bible translation, man. Don't you know? Thou shalt doeth fiddlesticks. It's about whether you put your faith in what God's own Son did for us more than two thousand years ago, or in a pile of money. The right type of relationship with money is one that honors God. And let me guess. The right relationship with money that honors God is where the pastor gets, you know, gets his hands on some of it. Mm, I, I wonder. Be funny, be funny if that was uh, somehow correct, you know. It's um, 
Mm, anyway. Proverbs 3, 9-10 says, Honour the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. You honour God by trusting him as your source, not money. You will tr- your trust will cause your account to overflow with more than enough. God wants his people to prosper. Psalm 35, 27 says, Let them shout for joy and be glad, that favour my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. When a Christian says that having money is not of God, this person is not walking in the Spirit, because that kind of thinking does not line up with the Scriptures. And that ends the section titled The Truth About Money. Uh, The next section is called Agreeing with God. And I will read that in the next section. So I'm just going to highlight that so I know where I am. Excellent. Excellent. That's that there. Yes, so um, this whole thing of... It's actually actually quite interesting because in one verse he quotes uh, Galatians... uh, So he says, you know, it's, it's about whether you put your faith in God's own son... Uh, what God's own son did for us more than 2,000 years ago, or in a pile of money. Then he goes to an Old Testament verse um, where there wasn't Jesus. See, it's not like... Okay, this is is one of the things that annoys me about um, modern Christianity, is that... Well, I can tell tell you a story of uh, uh, some anti-Semitism I came across recently. But, um, yeah, so... It's not like Christianity started in you know, de novo um, and they wrote um, all these scriptures to all be applicable at the same time. No, Christianity came out of Judaism. And, yeah, and like, so there's the thing that I call the magical context transporter. The magical context transporter is this uh, device that modern Christians use to take words said to ancient Jews, you know, at least 2,000 years ago, and to make them apply to you in America or Australia or Italy or wherever you are in the world in 2021, as if those words were being spoken to you and for you. No. Those words were spoken to them, and you cannot retroactively theologize or use the magic context transporter to make it apply to yourself. Um, yeah, especially the English translations. You can't take the the butchered English translations, say that this is what God meant all along, and then you know railroad and tread over and like push aside and minimize you know the great tapestry of of Jewish thought on you know with those scriptures. You know those scriptures are Jewish, and you can't come along as an American or as, as, as an Australian or as a as a modern fundamentalist and go, Haha, Jews, you know, you're trying to hide Christ. You know, <laughs> that's not what it means. I say 53 is really about Jesus. And they go, no, it's not. And you go, you don't know what you're talking about. You're just trying to hide Christ. That is literally how uh, an argument I came across recently on Twitter. Um, that's, yeah. Anyway, uh, thank you to uh, the account called There's Only Two Genders uh, for your for your comments. Thank you to anyone who uh, is who's watching right now or listening. Um, thank you for watching this on YouTube or on Facebook uh, afterwards after it's been recorded. Then all I can say is that until next time, look after yourselves, stay safe, uh, try be happy in these trying times, and uh, yeah, and uh, don't take financial advice from prosperity preachers. Goodbye.